Hey everybody, today on Rado Runs we're previewing a prototype of Pampero. But before I get going, please turn your subtitles on to the Klingon channel so that when I make rules goofs, you'll know what they are. And if you've done that, well then welcome to Uruguay, which, did you know folks, in real life, gets 95% of its electricity from clean renewable resources. Isn't that incredible? Well, um, Uruguay, you are showing the world how it's done, and this game is going to show us how it was done uh, by charting the growth of of the clean energy sector. And let me show you how it works today in a two-player run-through. I am the white power conglomerate corporation. Jen is the blue one over there. And uh, I've already set the board up with all kinds of contracts to be able to supply power to the rural and urban areas of the country and make a lot of money while doing it. And the thing is, the government has introduced all kinds of subsidies all over the place to encourage and incentivize us to switch switch over to uh, green energy, specifically to harness the winter winds, the Pompero, that um, will ultimately drive Uruguay to a green future. And have already done so in the real world. Oh, it's so amazing. Anyway, though, folks, uh, let's get going. How does the game work? Well, every player starts with the ha same hand of eight cards. And most of the time on your turn, you're going to play one of these cards to invest in electric infrastructure or deliver uh, power v to complete contracts that are spread all over the place. But not always. There's actually a little bit more to it than that. Most of the time, yeah, you just want to play a card and do what it says. But sometimes, uh, you don't have the cards you want to play, in which case, you go on ahead and you could spend an entire turn recovering all the cards from the main board. Although this will hasten the end of the game. Every time somebody does that to get all their cards back, the end is going to be coming that much quicker. And finally, if you don't want to do either of those things, you can spend your entire turn to grab one battery. Which is not great. You don't generally want to be doing that. There are better ways to be getting batteries. Although, you do get a little Consolation. If you spend your turn doing this, you're also going to up your chance of being first player in the next year of the game as we play through multiple years of the development of this country. So, if I'm going to play a card, how does it work? What do I do? Well, it depends on what I want to do. My cards let me build um, windmills, or wind farms, I should say. I've got Everybody has two of those. I've also got one that lets me build an, a tower. An electricity tower, which is absolutely essential for improving my overall infrastructure. Let's see, I've got this card that is kind of a wild. It'll let me do a wind farm or a tower or complete a contract. Speaking of that, I've got two different cards to fulfill contracts. One for regular ones and uh, foreign contracts to ship energy off to our neighbors, Brazil and Argentina. And then I've got this one that lets me do regular contracts or remote contracts. I've got this one that just lets me get investment if I just need a little bit more something something. Everybody starts with 25 pesos, but you could always use more cash, but you'll have to pay them off at the end. And this one lets me move my construction crews around from one place to another. As part of setup, at the beginning of the game, our construction crews are right here in the central rural area. And in fact, as part of setup, each of us already has one wind farm and one tower already built. And our two bulldozers here let us build on those two spaces. And those spaces let us build a windmill or a tower. Uh, if my bulldozer were over here, though, all I could do would be to build a tower. Although, my opponent could as well, because this is a game where you can use your opponent's infrastructure just as much as your own if you're willing to pay for it. So, um, this is our initial uh, setup. But that's all just one half of the game. If we take a quick look over here, you can see my personal power grid. With all these transformers waiting to be deployed out to the countryside uh, when I fulfill contracts. I've got more bulldozers I can invest in. I've got a lot more wind farms I can build. And I've also got all these income trackers. Although right now, I'm only making one income off residential commercial, uh, industrial, and resort contracts. I'm not making anything off remote contracts, but I'm hoping to make all these climbs so I can make a lot more money and invest in my grid. So, I should say, Blue over there has their own, but uh, this game takes up a lot of space, so I'm just keeping Blues off to the side. If I ever need to, I'll show you Jen's as, as hers uh, evolves in different directions than mine. Anyway, though, so... Let's stop talking about it. Let's start doing it. Let's play. What do I want to do? Well, 
let's start talking about a bit more because there's a couple more things for me to consider. First of all, as part of setup, one, two, three, four different objective tiles were drawn randomly from a huge assortment of them and uh, have become kind of the backbone of how we're going to score points over the course of this game. Uh, about midway through the game, there is going to be income made, a peso, for every excess energy we have available to us that we can produce. So, or in the early game, if you want to really pursue this, you want to start getting a lot of extra energy. And to get more energy on hand, you want to build a lot more wind farms. Uh, you'll notice there's this other one, but it says X. Ignore that one. Alrighty. Uh, later on in the game, near the end of the game, uh, we ignore the bottom half, and for this one we say, hey, there's 15 pesos. That's a lot of money to be made for whoever has the majority of costly upgrades to their power grid, which is what I just showed you. And that'll make more sense as we start upgrading the power grid. And now finally, there'll be like one more year, and then at the end, all four of these will be judged. We will um, get whoever has the most contracts in sector B2, which is the resort sector of Uruguay over here. Whoever's got the most contracts makes 15 bucks. Also, you make five bucks or five pesos for every contract that's on the um, far right hand side or the, uh, the more advanced version of your power grid. Then there's 15 bucks to whoever has the majority of commercial contracts, which mostly focus here in central in uh, the urban city. Uh, so that's something we want to be chasing after. And five bucks for every power tower we have in the rural areas, in sectors A1, A2, and A3. So these give us goals that we're going to be shooting for over the course of the game. And um, with that in mind, I think I want to start pursuing getting just a lot of excess energy on hand so that after we're four years in and we uh, do this, I make a bunch of extra income. So if that's my initial goal, then I need to make wind farms, which is kind of what I should be doing anyway in this game because we need to build these things to capture the Pompero. So um, let's see. Like I said, I've got three cards that will let me build a wind farm. Uh, either of these that are the same and then this one, which is it's one of the three things I could do. So let's go on ahead and build my first wind farm. So uh, let's come back over here and look a little bit more closely at my player board. I can now play this in the left most available slot on the top or the bottom of my board. If I play it on the top, it'll go like this. And that means I'm working in um, the A region of the board, which is the rural version, or the rural region of the board. If instead I put it down here, I have a choice. I can work in a, one of the B regions, which is the industrial sector and the resort sector. Or if I laid it down like this, I could be working in the C region, which is the urban area where most of the locals live, uh, you know, the, the big built-up cities. So I have to pick how am I going to play this. And depending on where I put it, it is going to change the cost. Uh, it would cost me 8 bucks to build a windmill farm in the rural region, or it would cost me 10 in the B, where either in the resort or the industrial, and it would cost me 17 Now remember, I started with 25 And by the way, I should say, folks, my prototype didn't come with any money, so this is, these are some money chips I grabbed from a different game. Uh, don't, don't know what the real money will look like in this game. You can hit that I in the top right corner screen and go check out the Kickstarter page. But there's one more consideration. i got to decide, hey, where am I going to build? But I do have a restriction, which is these bulldozers. Right now, my bulldozer and Jen's bulldozer are in an A region. So even if I wanted to build in the B or the C region, I couldn't do it because the bulldozers aren't down there yet. So I'm going to play this up here, which means I'm either going to use my bulldozer or Jen's bulldozer to build in an A region. So if we come back over and look at this a little bit more, remember, it says I need to spend 8 of my 25. So there goes 20, and I get 12 and change. Ouch. And now, if I'm using my own bulldozer, I pay that money to the bank. If I was using Jen's bulldozer, I would pay that money to her. And you might think, why would I ever do that? Why would I give so much money to my opponent? In the early game, you definitely wouldn't do that. But here's an interesting thing about this game, folks. The more you do tasks in the A section, you will notice it gets cheaper and cheaper and cheaper to do stuff. 
So, like, if I'm doing uh, a task in the A section with my fifth card, when I only have to pay two bucks, hey, maybe I'll use Jen's bulldozer because my bulldozer isn't in the A section, but Jen does have one there, and I don't mind paying her two bucks. I'm certainly not going to pay her eight bucks to use her bulldozer, but I might pay her four, or two, or even zero. This um, card management system is the beating heart of this game. The more cards you do in a given, um, on the top or the bottom, the cheaper things get. But, the, the, the sooner you do something, the harder it is to get those cards back. Remember, you can spend an entire turn getting all of your cards back, but in this game, you know, you're going to get you know, probably around 15 to 20 turns total, depending on if you're playing the regular or the long version of the game. And so spending one of those precious turns getting all your cards back is painful. Plus, if you get all your cards back, you throw away all those really great um, discounts by having invested so much. So anyway, I'm doing this. I paid my eight, and now I take a wind farm. Oh, look at them. And I put it over here. And um, now... My, a few things happen. My bulldozer has to move on to a new work site. We'll come back to that in a second. But if we look back again at my board, this card says, hey, spend this much money. But this is a little plus question mark energy. And it says, give yourself one energy. Now, everybody started with one energy from the wind farm we already had pre-built. I now have two energy available to me on hand that I can use to fulfill contracts or to hoard because, remember, we've got this goal coming in a while to say, hey, make extra money for the energy you have stockpiled on hand. Or, you know, it's really, this is how much energy I can generate that's not accounted for. Uh, you know, the higher it goes up, the more energy I have to be able to distribute, uh, and then I spend that energy to complete contracts, and it comes back down because that some of that energy is spoken for. But anyway, I've got two windmills now, I'm generating two energy, and uh, I've got a bright future. So, that was my turn. Easy peasy. Most turns, you're just going to play one of the cards from your hand, spend some money, sometimes spend some batteries, or sometimes spend some money and batteries, and uh, build things, because that's what we're here. We're here to build a new green energy infrastructure. Okay, so, like I said, my bulldozer has to move on. And there are, in sector A2, in the center rule, there are no more work sites. So I have to leave this sector and come over here to A1, or over here to A3, or to anything that's connected. This site is connected to all the different regions of Uruguay. So from here, here, I could come down and start working on one of these, or one of these, or any one of these. Ultimately, there's all uh, you know the the uh, urban area of Uruguay is gonna suck sucks up up all that energy, and I've got to decide where do I want to work next. Hmm. Well, to be honest, normally I'd probably want to stay up in the rural area. That's kind of what we're incentivized to do early in the game. And it costs less to build up here. But remember, there is this end game objective for having done the most contracts in Sector B2, the resort area down here. And with that in mind, I don't think I'm going to stay uh, rural. I'm going to come down here. And I can take one of these three work sites. This one has to be a tower, but either of these could be a tower or a uh, wind turbine. My choice. So how about I just park myself right over here and I'm ready to get to work. Okay. Uh, my turn is now well and truly over. Well, no, it's not. There's one more thing, folks. I forgot to mention this card. It says, in the center, it says, it, you know, at the bottom, it says, hey, how much do you have to pay? Uh, what benefit do you get for doing this thing? It also says it at the top, because, of course, maybe I put it on the bottom of my board. In the center, it says what to do. Build a wind farm, and you're on a, what's this big bullseye? Well, I could do that right now, because everybody starts with one bonus token. This bonus token I could put here, it goes on the bullseye, this is one of those government subsidies. If I want to, I could call in this subsidy to give myself one more energy or three more bucks. You know what? Let's go... Yeah, no, let's not do that. Let's not do that. I have a reason for not doing this right now. I could put this here, and then I'd be up to three energy, which would be great, because remember, I'm trying to have a lot more uh, energy uh, you know, potential. But I'm not going to do that right now for reasons that should become a clear a little bit later. Okay, I am done. Uh, oh, but I mark that I have done my first of three actions for the first year of this game. I've got two, you know, after we uh, do two more actions, there is going to be 
a consolidation phase that happens at the end of the year, um, which is what all this stuff is down here. Hey, after everybody's done their three things, all of this stuff is going to happen, including getting our little progress markers back, doing income, generating, storing excess power and batteries, all kinds of stuff. But we'll worry about that later. Okay, it is Jen's turn. Jen's in the same situation as me. She's got the same cards. Her situation is a bit different, though, because if she wanted to, she could um, develop in the rural area or down here because she could use mine. But she would have to pay me if she wanted to do that. So I think Jen, there's a lot of stuff she could do. Oops, this is one of her cards. There it is. Oh, the, uh, yeah. But you know, kind of hard to beat. I mean, we are here to capture the Pompero, the Pompero. So I think Jen's going to do the same thing. Uh, Jen will go on ahead and she will pretty much copy what I'm doing. And I mean, this is a very, I mean, we are here to generate wind energy. So this is a pretty common opening move. Let's go on ahead. She will pay eight and she will put one of hers over here. Right. And then she gets one energy just like I did, which I mark on her board, which is off screen. And, um, she'll, and, oh, uh, she will go on ahead. She will go on ahead and do this right now to either take one more energy or three coins. We, we have a lot of money right from the get-go, and Jen's planning on getting some more money pretty quick. So I think she'll just take the extra energy. So that actually puts her up to three, whereas me, I'm only at two. So that's a lot of contracts she could fulfill with all that energy she's got on hand. Okay. And now her boulder, bulldozer has to move on to greener pastures. And I think Jen's going to keep it rural. She is going to come over here. And by choosing this spot, this is not an either or. This one specifically says, hey, you can build towers. These are wind farms. These are towers. The one I went to gave me flexibility, gave me the choice. But Jen, I now know, sooner than later, she's probably going to build a tower uh, somewhere along the way. So uh, we'll see how that works out for her. And her first turn is done, and we are off to the races. It is now my second turn. And hey, remember, I want to generate uh, more energy. So I have it on hand because I know this objective is coming. So I've got another energy card. I will place this one right here. And as you can see, it's a bit more expensive. It's going to cost me 10 pesos uh, to come down here. I'm using my own bulldozer, not Jen. So I pay this to the bank instead of Jen. But I generate two energy. Uno, dos. So I'm, uh, I'm now rocking all the extra energy. And now I will use this. And I'd like to get more energy. I very much would. But I'm getting low on cash. So I'll take the three pesos, please. So I'll just take some cash money back. All righty, there we go. It is now Jen's turn again. Although, of course, I was supposed to be marking. I've taken my second turn. Jen has taken her first turn. Uh, all righty, let's not forget that important thing. And Jen's going to do something a little different now. She's going to build a tower. And she has a few different ways to do it. Uh, first of all, she has to play this card, you know, to the top or the bottom. Since she's wanting to build her tower in the A zone, she'll have to play it to her next top spot. And um, she will then have to pay whatever it says in money. Or when you're building towers, you notice there's the little asterisk. You can pay in cash or you can pay in batteries. Building a tower out in the A rural district costs one battery. We each started with one battery. Jen, I think, will hold on to her cash and build this uh, tower with the battery she started with. And a lot of important stuff happens now. Although, wait, before we get to the important stuff, let's go ahead and look a little bit more closely. Uh, let's see. This is what Jen just did. And it says, hey, build a tower. This costs six because it's going into her second slot. You'll notice it does not generate any energy for her. The windmills generate the energy. Building the towers increases her um, power grid, her overall infrastructure, which is what we are about to see. So she owes, she doesn't owe any money. She paid with a battery instead. And now we look at her board. And uh, we already had one uh, power tower out on the board. Jen is going to place her second. And a few things have happened. The more of these towers you build, the more potential you unlock. Um, when Jen builds her third tower, you see this line up here? That means until we build our third tower, our income for the different types of contracts is pegged at 
four pesos. But once you build again, it goes up to, we could uh, increase our income all the way up here to six pesos and so on. So the more towers we build, the more money we can make on our contracts. The more towers we build, the further we can develop our energy grid. If you don't build a tower, you can only build these first three transformers. But as soon as she takes that, she can build um, any of these seven transformers. Oh, there's a little bit more to it than that. We'll explain that when she does her first contract. Also, at the beginning of the game, when we only have our first tower built, we can only fulfill remote, residential, and solar contracts. Now that Jen has done this, she can also fulfill industrial and resort contracts, provide the resorts and the industry energy, which I cannot do, but Jen can. If she does the next one, then she can start developing commercial contracts. And if she does the next one, she could actually start delivering energy to the sea area, to the um, urban areas, which is where the big money is. But anyway, so Jen has built a tower and she has unlocked a lot of stuff uh, that's going to help her. And you can see, uh, you know, here's the energy she's built up so far. So she's going to take this She's going to put it here, and her turn is done. And uh, that was her second of three turns before the end of the first year, before we get to our consolidation. Okay, time for my third turn. Although, actually, time to rewind a little bit. I spent all my time talking about the tower, spending the money, getting the energy, but I didn't actually build. I'm sorry, not the tower, the wind farm. I should have built this over here. And then my wheelbarrow had to move on. Or not my wheelbarrow, my uh, bulldozer had to zip away to someplace new. And now that I've seen what Jen has done, that is very interesting. Jen has moved over here, which clearly indicates she wants to build another tower here. These are the only two places in this sector where we can build towers. And if Jen builds a second tower here, she will have a lot of control over this region. Um, right. But you know, but before she did that, I had moved. I didn't know she was going to do that. So, and I honestly, uh, my inclination was to just kind of stay down in this area and maybe build another windmill so I could start making some more cash. Although, because I have just enough, I've got five plus five is ten. That was kind of what I was thinking. Um, but, oh boy, that might change my mind. Let's say uh, previously I had moved here because my goal was to build another thing over here and just try to develop more energy, have more on hand that much faster. But then Jen did this. And now my overall calculus changes because I don't want her to have the only towers in this region. And here's the deal, folks. You just saw Jen do it. I could build a tower. I could totally build a tower. Um, and I could pay money. Or I could pay. And here's the deal. I could build a tower down here. Because this space lets me build a tower or a wind farm. Right? And that might have been my original plan. But Jen, I think, is making me change my plans. Because... I better build a tower up here too if I don't want to get frozen out. Not exactly frozen out. The, the reality is, you can see there are one, two, three, four contracts in this region that we can fulfill and start making income. Um, you can only fulfill these contracts if there's a tower in the region. And um, if the only towers belong to somebody else, you have to pay your opponent to fulfill these contracts. And delivering energy to the people is what we're here to do. If Jen controls both of these towers, I have to pay her for any of these contracts. And if I don't, she'll eventually suck them all up herself. And that's a little scary. I can't let that happen. So I'm going to build a contract and I'm going to use Jen's bulldozer to do it. Now, this is in the A section, so coming back to my board, that means we've got to come down to the uh, A part. Boom. I'm building a tower. This is going to cost me six coins, which I'd rather not do. I had other uses for this money. It's going to cost me six coins. Um, or, remember, if you're building a tower up in the, uh, the rural areas, the A areas, it costs one battery. I'm going to spend a battery to build this tower. And because I'm using Jen's bulldozer instead of my own, instead of this going back to the bank, it goes to Jen. And Jen says, why, thank you. Thank you very much. I'll be able to make use of that in the future. And um, so fine. I have now made my own infrastructure investments so that I can fulfill contracts here using my own tower instead of hers so I don't have to pay her money to use hers. Although I did have to pay her money, to, or I paid her batteries, but anyway. So Jen is going to move on. 
She, I mean, you know, she can now move over here to start doing, or she, from here, she could move down to this region um, to start working in B1. The problem is she can't move back to this region because there's no more work sites available. So Jen has a choice. We'll come back to her in a second when she decides where to do her bulldozer because we have to finish resolving my tower. I paid Jen the battery. I Well, actually, we did. I, I've upgraded. So now I've upgraded my potential infrastructure the same way Jen did. And so I am done. And now Jen decides where does she bulldoze onto. She could come here to make another tower or here to do towers or windmills. She has another option as well, though. So her options are to come down here because there's no spaces up there, and this is not adjacent to any other region. Or instead, if she doesn't want to come and occupy one of these spaces, she could come over here. If she puts a, our bulldozer in this space, on a future turn, whenever she would move a bulldozer, and by the way, we all have a card that lets us move our dozers around, from here, she can go any place. So it's like it's in reserve, and then from there, it can jump to the other side of the country. Or instead, if she feels like she doesn't need her bulldozer anymore, she could promote this work crew and lock up one of these four spaces, immediately giving herself two batteries, three energy, income, or a specialist. And that's really cool, too. Jen could do this. But losing her bulldozer means until she gets another one built, she would be 100% reliant on my work crew, and she'd be having to pay me to use my work crew, and I'd be deciding where it goes. So, as much as she would love to get a specialist, and when I say specialist, I'm talking about these cards over here. Uh, there are three mini objectives that we can use during scoring, and then there are three additional action cards that can go into your deck. So you have more things you can do, often more powerful versions of the stuff we can already do. If Jen wanted to give up her bulldozer, she could snag one of these, but she says, no, it's way too early for that. So she's just going to come down. Um, or, 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 she doesn't have to come down here. She could just stay. She could stay in A1 and start building some wind farms, which is not a bad idea. Uh, generating more energy so that you can fulfill more contracts is usually a good thing in this game. So, I don't. does she want to come down to B-Town where she could build a tower? Now, here's the interesting thing. If she comes down here and builds a tower here to try to get um, you know, the controlling interest of this area, well, it wouldn't work quite as well because both of these spaces could be wind farms or towers. So, I mean, yeah, Jen, she tried to get a Monopoly. I swooped in. She benefited from it. It basically means she built her tower for free because when I built my tower, I gave her my battery back. So she's not going to complain. She's going to stay here and start, um, you know, building some more wind farms. Alrighty. So, that was my turn. And on my turn, Jen was very much involved. But now, uh, all right, and that, by the way was my last turn. I have now played three cards for the first year, and on my next turn, I will go into consolidation. But let's see what Jen's going to get up to now with her remaining cards. Well, Jen knows consolidation is coming for her as well. And before she gets there, she would like to have completed a contract or two so that it will increase her income. Because that's one of the things that happens during consolidation is we make money based off of our, uh, our contracts that we fulfilled. And we haven't done that yet. So I think Jen's going to be the first to play a contract card. She has a few options. She has this one. She has this one. And again, I have these same ones. And she has this one. Now, this is a combo. This is arguably the most useful card because it lets you do just about anything. It lets you do wind farms or towers or contracts. But not as well. Not with the same kind of flexibility. I think Jen is going to use this card of the, of the three options she has. This card lets her either uh, do a regular contract or an overseas contract. Or not overseas, but our neighbors. Our, a foreign contract. Um, delivering energy to Brazil and Argentina. Uh, which are represented by all of these cards over here and over here. Um, we're a long ways away from that. Because you can only deliver this stuff via batteries. You need to have a lot of batteries to fulfill these and make a lot of money. And Money in this game is points, if I haven't mentioned it, folks. So Jen figures, you know what? She doesn't have to do... She, she'll give this up. She wasn't going to be doing overseas contracts anytime soon. And she will play this over here. This is the third thing that she has done in the A region. And uh, let me see. I can't really zoom in on hers, but let me just go on ahead and use Guild Purple players again. So this is what it looks like. Jen said, hey, I want to complete a contract, right? Now it's going to cost me five bucks 
or five pesos, which Jen has, and that money either goes to the bank if Jen uses her tower or goes to me if she uses my tower. She's going to be using her own tower, thank you very much, not mine. And um, then she acts to pick uh, a contract from the region where she's doing the work, from the A region, and deliver the energy. And so Jen is going to do that. And so this goes here. But uh, if she'd done this right out of the gate, it would have cost her eight bucks. Now it only costs her five. Okay, and she's using her tower, not mine. And so she has paid. Now, let's look a little bit more closely at the contracts she could do. Since she didn't pay me for my tower, uh, she has to do this in a region where her towers are, which is here in A2 and A1. Uh, doesn't matter where the bulldozer is. The bulldozer's location only matters for building stuff. Jen is going to try and grab these contracts. Now, A1 is the easiest. Every single one of these, uh, they don't need much energy. They just need one energy to pursue those. The one over here need two energy. So they're a little bit more costly. Now remember, Jen thus far has three total energy that she could actually deploy for contracts. And normally when you do a contract card, you get to fulfill one contract. It's an entire turn to fill one contract. But there is an exception to that. And it has to do with this little link right here. If when you fulfill something that's linked, if you have everything you need to fulfill the other one, you could do two contracts for one action. And Jen would very much like to do that. She would very, very much like to do that indeed. So if we look around, hey, here's a link. She could do this one, but since there's no towers over here, she can't do this one in Air 2. Um, but this one she can, because there's towers here and here. Both of these could be done in one action for the five bucks. Or both of these could be done. Now, the, to complete these two, Jen would need four total energy. She does not have four energy. She has three energy. If she had four energy, she would do these ones because look at these. Look at them. They would increase her residential, her commercial, um, her um, resort, and again, her residential income. That would be a big deal. Although, hold on a second. Hold on a second. If we look a little bit more closely, we have to remember, Jen's infrastructure upgrade lets her fulfill industry and resort contracts, but not commercial contracts. So even if Jen wanted to, she can't do this one yet because she hasn't built her infrastructure up high enough. So that means this one's out. She doesn't have the energy. She doesn't have the infrastructure to do it. So Jen says, hey, I'm going to spend two energy to do this. And because it's linked to this one, and this one also has an active tower, I'm going to spend one energy to do that. And in one action, Jen has completed two contracts for the low, low cost of five pesos. Jen is a brilliant businesswoman. And so here's what happens next. Uh, you may be wondering, what's with all these cool things? These are all power transformers. Um, whenever you fulfill a contract, you replace a power transformer with one of the contracts. And the first time you do it, you have to start here, here, or here. And then once you... So if, if Jen starts here, let's say, the next time she does it, which is going to be immediately because she did two contracts for one, she could go further to the right and get a bonus. Or from there, she could move up and not get a bonus. So Jen's got to decide what two spaces is she going to fill right now. And this could be a big part of her overall strategy too. Because the different paths we take will lead to different bonuses. Let's take an even closer look. Uh, and let's turn off the green screen because oh my goodness. That green is the exact color of my green screen. So that's not good. Let's just take a little bit of a look. Where is Jen going to go? So the first one, and no matter what, it's not really going to do anything for her. But then the second one, which she will be able to go right, because remember, she upgraded her infrastructure. She can um, put contracts in the first column and the second column, right? So she goes here. The next one could be over here, and that would increase the income she makes off of rural, uh, which is nice. So she'd make more money in the consolidation we're about to have. If she comes here, then she could zip over there, and that would just make her some cash right now. I don't think she's excited about uh, that one. I think, actually, she does like this bottom one. So she's going to say, hey, put this one here. And now she could go up. These are connected, but instead she'll go this way because she can. And she'll put this one right here. And it says, hey, 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 how about get a specialist? And Jen says, yes, thank you very much. I would very much like a specialist. And so this is a big deal. Jen's making a big power move right out of the gate. 
So these transformers come back onto the board, so everybody knows Jen fulfilled those. Uh, they maybe don't have any function unless there's some kind of in-game scoring for transformers in certain locations and stuff like that. But as it is, um, Jen has fulfilled two contracts, and uh, Jen gets any one of these right now. And what is she going to take? I wonder. I wonder indeed. And now I'll be honest, folks. Right from the get-go. My plan for Jen was she wanted to get this because this says, hey, whenever you play this card, get more money out of your investors. Jen uh, is getting low on cash. She was planning on um, you know, going to get some capital investment pretty soon, which just gives her a fixed amount of money. But then afterwards, if she plays this card, she can get more money depending on how many times she's gone to investors. So that's kind of what she was thinking about. But I didn't really look that closely at the other cards. Uh, this one is she can use once to give herself just a little bit of a boost if she needs energy, if she needs another specialist, uh, although she's getting a specialist right now, uh, if she just wants a little influx of cash, if she wants some more batteries. But actually, I'm kind of looking at this one too. Remember how I talked about earlier, Jen had the opportunity to move her bulldozer over here and say, oh, I don't know, um, get a specialist, right? She could have done that and she would have taken one of these. Um, this specialist is a pretty nice one because when Jen plays this card, she has to pay money depending on what slot it goes into, but she unlocks her bulldozer. So you can get those promotion benefits from your bulldozer and then you can get your bulldozer back on a subsequent turn. So that's a really cool little onesie twosie. So she might like that one. She was still thinking about this one because she knows she's going to go to capital investment soon. But also... I didn't look that close, folks. I didn't see there's this one. This is very special. This is completing contracts, but not contracts like what you just saw, not regular contracts. This is solar contracts. This is, and there are only a couple ways in the game that you can get these. And Jen says, I want this. This is a new card that goes into Jen's hand. And so that is a huge deal. A very, very big deal indeed. Um, and then a new one comes out. Okay, which is a, another uh, bulldozer-based one. And okay, that was Jen's turn. She is now ready for consolidation on her turn. Although, oh my gosh, folks. Oh my gosh. Uh, remember how I always say, watch with the Klingon subtitles. I'm sure Paula was shouting at me probably 15 minutes ago. Back when... Both Jen and I were building our towers. I totally forgot. There is something very, very important about building towers. It tells you right on the card. It says, hey, spend your money or your batteries, build your tower, and get a tower bonus. Get an infrastructure. These are the other subsidies. Well, every time you build a tower to increase the infrastructure, you get these bonus tiles. Jen did it first, and then I did it. So we're going to have to rewind a little bit, folks, and talk about all of these. Because by now, Jen should have two of these tokens, and so should I. And I can't believe I forgot to do it, but, and I can't believe I'm about to do this, folks, but I'm going to be kind of a jerk and say, if you would like to see me picking those up, well, you might want to go on ahead and hit that eye up in the top right corner of the screen and go to the extended gameplay. Um, or you can follow the link down in the show notes. Uh, in the extended gameplay, I will correct my mistake, we will get our bonus, our tower bonus tiles, and then we will continue with the first consolidation of the game, where a whole bunch of stuff happens. So you definitely want to uh, stick it out and see what's coming next. Or, if you just want to hear what Jan and I thought of the game, you can also go to Final Thoughts. Your choice in 5, a 4, a 3, a 2, a 1.